The Metasploit directory structure, this time on Metasploit Minute. This Metasploit Minute is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hakshop.com. Welcome to Metasploit Minute, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Mubix. In this minute, we're going to be exploring the Metasploit directory structure. Now, there are two main directory structures that you're going to have to deal with. Everyone knows the Metasploit directory, where you have Metasploit installed, and this version what we're going to be talking about is the Git version that we've already talked about in the previous episodes, as well as the home directory .msf4. So this is in your um, slash root or slash home user .msf4. So first off, we're going to be talking about the .msf4 directory. So let me show you on the screen. Inside of the .msf4 directory, we have a few things. We have our database.yaml or YML file, which we already put there. Um, that is by default loaded in as the default configuration for, uh, for Metasploit. We also have that history file. That history file is all the commands that we've typed. Inside a logs directory is framework.log. Framework.log is where if anything goes wrong or inside of Metasploit or MSF console, you're probably going to find that, that information in framework.log. So in local, there's not really much there. In loot, that's where all of our fun stuff is going to be. Well, we haven't exploited anything yet. We're going to get there, I promise. But anything that you do um, as far as doing screen captures or pulling down all kinds of hash, hashes and, and fun other things that we'll be talking about goes in that loot directory by default. It's, it's a primary location. The great thing about this being in your home directory, and we'll talk about the other things that make this great, but since you can have multiple installs of Metasploit, we have the community edition as well as the Git version on this particular Kali Linux thing uh, install. All of that loot from either install goes into this directory. So um, inside there we'll have the fun stuff. Inside of modules directory, let's get back to modules. Now there's nothing in there right now, but the cool thing about this directory is that all of the modules that you create personally, and we'll be going into that um, in later segments on how to create modules, all of those modules you can throw them in there, and then you don't have to worry what Metasploit run you're running. All of those modules are automatically loaded from this directory. This way you don't lose your modules either when you do a git pull or git update or reset or have, however. Um, switching back into the plugins directory. Now the plugins directory, mirror, just like the modules directory, it mirror, mirrors the uh, plugins directory that we're going to be talking about in the Metasploit directory. These are all of your personal plugins. Your personal plugins can um, do a, they're much more feature rich than a module. So a module can do a number of things in its particular instance and, and how it runs, but plugins are Metasploit wide or MSF console wide, and we'll be showing those also. In the schema directory, it's basically database schema information, and that's it for the .msf4 directory. Switching back over to the Metasploit directory, we have a ton of directories and a ton of, uh, of binaries. So in the config directory, we have configuration data. In data, we have all kinds of information. Um, cool thing about this directory is it has a word list directory, and we'll be switching over to the word list. Lots of word lists for you to use in your exploitation stuff. Lots of defaults that are known by a collective of pen testers and, and, and Metasploit developers, SIDs and, and de default Tomcat credentials and what have you. So we're going to switch back into our main directory. So next up is the database. That's um, database information. Doc. Now this doc directory isn't there by default. How you do, how you create that doc directory is you do yard space doc. Now that's already created. I'm going to cancel that. That's already created. Um, and once that's done, once yard doc is done, it's basically generating documentation on the fly from your Metasploit directory. And it makes it in a very cool way where you can just host it yourself. That way you never have to have an internet connection to look at all the documentation for Metasploit. So inside of that directory, once you switch in there, you can type python-m simple HTTP server. 
This is a great little uh, one-liner that creates a web server um, using Python. And as you can see, HTTP on all ports, you know, 8,000. I've already got this pulled up over here. And you, this is a fully featured uh, documentation. So if I uh, pull out the methods list and I start typing, it's going to give me all the method, methods for different things. So maybe Rex, and this is going to take a while. It, uh, so this VM is a little slow. But, and there is so much. This, this is a project that is massive. So there's so much in there that sometimes it takes a while to find what you're looking for. But I guarantee everything that you are looking for is in there. So let's switch back over to our Metasploit directory. Oops. So inside of there, that documentation directory is where we find all of our documentation. External is where we find all of our external source code. Anything that is pulled in the Metasploit with its source available there, that since Metasploit is an open source project. Um, the library directory or lib directory, of course, has all libraries. Um, modules is where the magic happens. Module directory has all of the Metasploit modules, and that's really the heart and soul of Metasploit. Um, if there weren't modules, Metasploit really wouldn't do any do much. So um, we'll be going to, into modules a lot more in depth in later episodes. Plugins directory, I already talked about those in the .msf4 um, directory. Plugins, um, so again, they are a way to do stuff automatically inside of MSF console or the instance or the, the um, section or whatever of Metasploit. Um, so scripts is a bunch of scripts. Um, everything from interpreter scripts to resource scripts. We'll talk about resource and interpreter scripts later. Um, spec and test are, are test cases uh, on, on how you can make sure that Metasploit or anything that you've changed in Metasploit doesn't affect the rest of it. Um, and the tools directory. Tools directory is pretty interesting. Let's actually look in there real quick. It has a bunch of um, different tools in here um, that are not exactly Metasploit modules. Um, well, they're not Metasploit modules, but they're built in for Metasploit for other things. So um, one of my favorites is this psexec.rb. Um, now, psexec.rb is a psexec external to Metasploit. So if you need to pass the hash, and we'll talk about that later, if you need to pass the hash um, without having any kind of Metasploit installed somewhere, you can take psexecrb, you can compile it into an executable, um, run it on a closed uh, environment, and have pass the hash abilities to your heart's consent without having Metasploit for you. Um, MSF tidy is another one that I'll probably be killed if I don't mention. Um, MSF Tidy is an uh, awesome little script that checks your Metasploit modules to make sure that everything is in its right place and documented and done correctly so that when you submit it as a module to the GitHub repository or the, the Metasploit project, um, they won't yell and scream at you for um, missing a, a space at the end or a new line or whatever. And that's it for the uh, directories. So. Let me know what you think. Hit me up at msf at hack5.org and stay tuned to metasploitminute.com for more shows like these. Until then, I'm Mubix and I'll be hacking till the cows come home. Yay! Demo awesome!